Okay guys, welcome to another Friday Waffle. The weekend is here at long last. It's actually turned out uh, not a bad day. Um, weather's been pretty iffy, quite a bit of rain this week. But today, and even yesterday, wasn't actually half bad. So uh, yeah, Deli delighted it's the weekend. As always, works uh, just madcap busy. But like I say, it always makes for a, a quick week, which is always good. <clears throat> tonight, um, I'm actually recording this a wee bit earlier tonight, um, although I'll put it out a bit later. I'm actually going out tonight uh, through to Edinburgh on the train with a couple of mates. I'm going to see uh, my mate Andy. He's uh, <clears throat> He's got his own rock band. So he's playing He's playing a gig, I think, with another, is it one or two bands through in Edinburgh. So I'm looking forward to that, get the train, and then I always just stay to the end to help Andy pack up and then get a lift, lift back. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And um, the rest of the weekend, what am I up to? Um, uh, it's my niece's 16th birthday, so I'm going through there. Uh, we're going, it's a wee kind of tea thing we've got. On Sunday, um, tomorrow, I've got no plans. Got my part run, just depending on the weather. I might go with my bike, whatever. So, anyway, listen, you're not, I don't know why I insist on telling you about what I'm doing because somebody could be watching this video years to come. And I might not even be alive, so it's utterly pointless. <laughs> um, yeah, YouTube update. If you watch YouTube, and I'm guessing if you're watching this, then you must be, unless you've got some other strange way of watching YouTube videos. YouTube have updated their uh, website. Now, uh, I notice everything is just um, kind of magnified. It's, everything's just so much bigger looking. It looks... It kind of reminds me of um, when I had a PC, you know, in the early, early 90s, not early 90s, late 90s, you know, when monitors, the maximum resolution was like, was it 1078 by 768, whatever it is. Everything just looks so much bigger. Um, they've changed the layout of stuff. Why? I've got no idea. Um, I mean, there's been a few tweaks over the years that I've been making YouTube content, and it's never been anything too bad, but it just looks horrible. It's just, everything's far too big looking. Um, you know, it just it doesn't look very nice. I dare still get used to it, but, you know, needlessly say, a lot of people are quite upset about it. Um, but YouTube do their own thing. I mean, uh, I don't get into the politics of YouTube. I know I was watching a video earlier on about how uh, <clears throat> algorithms affect where your videos appear and all this kind of stuff. And I know there's, I think it's been going for quite a while, YouTube take will take down videos of good swearing and you can't monetize videos of swearing. Now, fortunately, well, A, I don't uh, monetize videos and B, I don't swear very often. I do occasionally um, see a naughty word, but I do, I am, I'm always aware that, you know, kids could be watching this. Uh, although looking at my, my stats, I think my average viewer is about 40 year old and male. <laughs> and Scottish as well, I think, by the looks of some of the stats. But uh, it's quite funny. Yeah. In fact, that, so that was that was YouTube, uh, YouTube update. I was uh, down at Insomnia um, on, when did I go down? Last Saturday, drove down um, to Birmingham. It's a hell of a long way, it really is. Um, we left about midday, it was just me and my daughter went, we left about midday on the Saturday and we drove down, in fact it wasn't midday, it was near, it was about half past two actually and uh, we didn't stop, I mean it was, I think it was just under 300 miles and we were making good progress, you know, I don't speed, I really, I do not speed, I don't see the point in speeding, it's dangerous, and it makes really no difference to, you know, when you're going to get there. So I just always sit at the limit, and uh, making pretty good time, and we were coming off, was it the M6 Junction 6, I think it was? And of course, we get to Junction 6, and it's like, uh, Junction 6 closed. So we had to keep on going, um, and we get, ended up coming off at another junction. It went from, at the point we were going past junction six, it was three miles to the hotel. And when we got 
once we went past junction six because we couldn't turn off the sat nav jumped to was it 23 miles so it instantly added i don't know was it was 18 miles to our journey and by this point i mean i don't know what time it was it was about eight o'clock i think it was it was getting starting to get dark and by the time i actually got into birmingham city center it was you know saturday night in a large city what do you expect it was just fully people and i was driving round and round and round and you know sat navs are all good you know they're, they're great for taking you to places but if you're looking for a particular building it's sometimes not the greatest. I usually use uh, Google Maps because, you know, that will usually take you right there. But I says I was driving about and it was just, there was traffic everywhere. There was one-way roads. I was getting lane and, oh man, I was, it was, it took me about half an hour to eventually find the hotel. Um, I mean, it was a huge thing, but it was so big that I didn't really notice it. It was right slap bang in the middle of Birmingham. So, uh, and of course, when we got out, there was... <laughs> there was kids like I'm saying kids because of you know I don't know what age they were early 20s they were all over the place and there was people lying in the you know outside pushed out their head um, <laughs> so anyway yeah I was glad to get to the hotel and uh, the following morning we got up nice and early and we drove to uh, we drove to Insomnia which was at the NEC um, what did I think of it we were there on the Sunday, and I've got to say it wasn't it wasn't too busy. I think the Saturday would have been busier. I mean, it ran from was it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday? I don't know if it ran on the Friday. It certainly ran on the Monday as well. So we were there on the Sunday, and it wasn't actually too bad. I mean, if you've never been to Insomnia, it's it's huge. It's a massive, massive budget. Um. You know, they had all the new games. I mean, we were playing, well, <laughs> we were playing typical what you do. We drove all the way down. We drove 300 miles to Birmingham. And as soon as we got in, my daughter wanted to play Splatoon 2 on the uh, Switch. And to be fair, I had a shot as well. And I really enjoyed it. I really need, well need to start playing it. So we played that. And then what else did we play? Um, I can't remember what else we played. She wanted to play Overwatch, which she's got um, already. But... Yeah, there was loads of new systems. I mean, loads of new games and show. They had uh, Mario Odyssey. Though, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, Nintendo do not allow you to video. I know the last time I was at Insomnia, what was I? I was recording. It was the uh, Mario. It was on the game for the Wii U. Mario, we you build your own levels. I was recording that and a guy came and basically gave me a round and said I couldn't, I couldn't record it. Um, but yeah, there was tons of stuff for the Xbox One, you know, the PC. I mean, you had uh, they had uh, Call of Duty World War Two, which is coming out. I think it comes out is it next month possibly. Um, I've got to see. I was watching the trailer for it. You know, I am not a Call of Duty fan. I'm not interested in Battlefield and Call of Duty, but I've got to say, I really like the look of this. Um, it's it's going right back to its roots, you know, World War Two, rather than the more modern stuff. So I think that might be a day one purchase for me. I don't make, I don't buy many sort of current games uh, when they first get released, but I think I might make an exception. This it does look beautiful. So there was a big, big uh, sort of exhibition thing for that, but you had to queue up. It was all this is what they now do. And it's quite annoying actually. You've got to queue up to get in, and it's all undercover. So unless you join the queue, you can't see the game, which I think is a bit silly because it meant guys like myself, I wasn't going to queue up to uh, to get in. So I didn't see it. Whereas if I got to see it, then I'm more likely to go and tell people about it, like I'm doing just now. Um, so yeah, there was that. What else was there? There was the new... Uh, oh man, what's it called? Not Far Cry. Was it not Far Cry? Was it Far Cry? I think it might be with a new Far Cry game. There was all the modern games you could think of. They did have um, a, a sort of retro zone. They had a few consoles, the usual you know, SNESs and Mega Drives and that kind of thing. They had. They also had some cabs. Now, rather disappointingly, you had to pay for them. Um, they didn't have any classic cabs that I could see. They had stuff like uh, 
some driving games. I think there's a few kind of light gun games, but I wasn't going to pay for them. Stuff that you know, when I've paid whatever it was, twenty odd quid to get in, I expect to get, be, be able to play them for nothing. So I didn't play that. Um, they had they had a couple of stall selling retro stuff. A big big part of insomnia is obviously the the retailers. Um, there were loads and loads and loads of them. Tons and tons of guys selling your loot crates and all that. And I mean, there was even one they were selling it for forty five quid. You know, forty five pounds for a box with random stuff that you may or may not like. You know, but the thing is, they must they they proved very popular because there was loads of people um, you saw them walking about with the boxes. But um, usual overpriced food. Um, that's always that seems to always be the case with these things. Now the reason I personally wanted to go, it was because I uh, I saw in fact it was in a video, Stuart Ashens, um, you know Ashens by now. He had mentioned that he was going to be going down there to do a talk, so I thought yeah I want to go down and see him. I'd love to you know I follow his channel avidly. I think he's really good. He's entertaining. Um, <clears throat> so when we got down there, I asked. Um, could somebody tell me when he's going to be on? And a few people looked at me like, you know, and you know who? And I'm like, Ashens, he's one of your guests. All oh, right, okay. It eventually turned out that he wasn't doing a talk. He was doing what's called a meeting greet, and basically he sits beside that behind a table, and you come up and you shake your hand and you get a picture taken with him. But nobody could tell me when he was going to be on. Absolutely nobody in the place. I spoke to maybe half a dozen people. Nobody at all knew when he was going to be there. Uh, now this thing ran from like 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So I asked, in fact, I thought, well, why don't I ask the guy himself? So I tweeted Stuart Ashens and he, he replied to me. and says, hey, Stuart, I believe you're doing a, a meet and greet. Could you tell me when and where it is? And he said it's going to be at quarter past four. So I thought, right, that's fine. I'll do that, um, but I've got to say, by, I don't know what time it was, three o'clock, something like that, Ava and myself were pretty much exhausted everything that we wanted to see. The thing with these shows, I do, uh, it doesn't take me long to kind of get around them. Because there's no games to play as such, then, you know, well, there were games, but you have to queue up. Whereas, like, you go to like, a play event, you've got all these arcade games. So by three o'clock, well, we're kind of both thinking, you know, well, I've got a, a six-hour drive ahead of me. So I said to Eva, like, do you want to stay? And she's like, no, I'm not bothered, not bothered. So I reluctantly left just to back of three, um, got home for about eight o'clock it was. So I missed Ashens, but you know what? For the sake of saying hello to him, you know, I wasn't going to hang back till quarter past four, whatever it was. Um, I was a wee bit disappointed that he wasn't doing his talk that I thought he was going to be. That was the reason I went. But saying that, my daughter, I had promised my daughter I was going to take her to the, the Glasgow Insomnia. Um, and then because I basically, I didn't realise when it was, it was actually past, I missed it. I thought, hey, we'll go to this Birmingham one. And I said, the fact that Ashens was going to be there was a big, big uh, reason for me wanting to get down. But would I go back to it? Um, probably not. I wouldn't, I mean... You know, the cost aspect of it, the petrol, you know, you've got 12 hours driving, you've got all the food that you buy, you've got to stay in a hotel, we had the, the trauma of trailing around the Birmingham City Centre on a Saturday night at 8 o'clock, completely lost. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to one down south, you know, um, it's just, it's too far. Um, I would try and go to the one in Glasgow. Um, it's more really for Ava, I've got to say. Um, rather than myself but one one thing that I mean I've, I was watching when I came back one thing that's massive about, about these events is there's a lot of like uh, famous YouTubers and most of them I had no idea who they were I mean it's it's just incredible you see this guy a young you know young guy standing behind a desk sat at a desk and there's just this enormous queue of people waiting to shake his hand um, and speak to him. You know, I didn't know who they were. There's one guy. He's called Syndicate. He's a, an English guy, and he's a, a he's a blogger, vlogger, whatever you call it. Plays games and that kind of stuff. He has got I 
think he's, I had a look at his channel the other day there, he's got over 10 million subscribers and you ought to see the videos that he puts up. I mean, he must, it's a, obviously it's a full-time job. One of the videos, he was buying his grandfather a, a Jaguar. Um, I mean, the lifestyle that this guy has is just incredible. Um, you know, it, it just lets you see how, you know, YouTube, YouTube is, it's as popular as any other form of media, TV, you know, kids of a certain age, that's what they watch. You know, they don't watch the TV, the people they know, the people they look up to, um, celebrities and that, it's YouTubers. Um, not not old guys like myself, but, you know, it's, it's just incredible when you see just how popular some YouTubers have become. Just absolutely insane. You know, this guy is obviously... He's got a damn good earning out of it. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're young enough and you're quite happy to talk about different things, don't make a retro channel, a retro gaming video channel. You'll never make any money out of it. Not at all. Get away. Fly. Um, you need to concentrate on more mainstream kind of games. But uh, ah, yeah, it was it was interesting. But I says it was a tiring weekend. Uh, spent a shitload of money. You know. So. Uh, I wouldn't go back. I'd go back to one in Glasgow, but certainly not one uh, in Birmingham again. So, Right, anyway, um, I want to keep this fairly brief. I've got a, a timer again on my phone so I can see. Um, I've got 30, 33 minutes until the camera runs out of battery. So, uh, kicking things off, Scott Retrohawk. What do you think of YouTube's new layout? Do you think there's any need for them to tinker with things that are not broken? Um, I didn't even look at the questions, Scott, so uh, as, you, as you're aware, I've already answered that. Um, I don't know why they insist on changing things. You would think they should send out a... They should send out a sort of like a... A survey to people who make YouTube videos. Obviously, people like myself are absolutely... We don't even register with YouTube. We're so minute... And I don't monetize, but channels that bring a lot of ad revenue, YouTube should be contacting them and saying, "Do you want us to change anything?" Thing is, YouTube, YouTube is YouTube. We know I know how to upload a video. I know how to add comments. I know how to put little cards where you get the wee channel thing appearing at the top of the corner. I know what I need to do. Um, if they're bringing out new features, great. But it's it reminds me. I'm going to be sexist here for a second. It remi YouTube reminds me of um, a woman wanting to change the living room about for no other reason other than for a change. You know, so rather than having things where you know where they are, they change it all um, just for the sake of it. And I think YouTube do that sometimes. There's probably some uh, logic behind them changing it. Um, but I can't see anything other than it looks worse. It's all zoomed in looking. They've even introduced a button called the dark theme where it makes the whole screen white becomes black and it just looks awful, absolutely awful. You can you can enable it. Um but yeah, I don't know what they've done, Scott. You know, it would be nice if they asked people first, are you happy with the way YouTube is? Do you want us to change it instead of just going ahead and thinking actually when when it happened, was it I don't know what day it was, it was one day this week. I actually thought that my browser had screwed up. And I'm trying to refresh it. And I mean, I looked at YouTube on, uh, I use Firefox. I looked at YouTube uh, using Internet Explorer. And I noticed it was exactly the same. That's kind of annoying my beard a wee bit. That's better. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Scott. I dare say I'll get used to it. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, I've just got to go on with it, mate. Right, Kev, down the rabbit hole. He's got another uh, four, five, five questions. Thanks, Kev. Number one, do you consider the PS2 retro? I think it's the last console I don't have that I may want to collect for. Any hidden gems or must-have titles you recommend? I I would say, you know, I mean, what? how do you regard things as retro? It, it all depends on your age. I'm, I'm going to be 50 in a few months' time, so I've been here since the ZX81. So I've got a huge number of systems that I can look at 
So my, what I consider retro is going to be different from my daughter. My daughter may think the DS is retro. Um, or I don't know, the Xbox 360 is retro. It all depends, you know, what you've kind of had experience of. PS2, it's kind of getting there. I mean, I know it would absolutely be regarded as retro. For me, it's... <laughs> It's, it's a really, really stupid one. Because I've been playing video games for way too many years, I can remember the VIC-20, the ZX-81, the Spectrum, the 16K, never mind 48K, the, all the 8 bits, the 16 bits. When I had the 16 bit, I remember reading about the Sega Mega Drive and to me that was a new console. It was like, whoa, this new console... Yeah, I do look upon the Mega Drive and SNES as retro. The PlayStation, I look upon, or I did look upon it, as being a fairly modern console in comparison to what I've had before. But, you know, this, the PlayStation came out, when was it, 94, something like that, 1994. So it's been out for, it's been out for like 25 years almost. So the PlayStation is absolutely retro and the same with the PlayStation 2, it's been out for, I don't know how many years, 15 years, something like that, maybe more. So I would say, yeah, I would have to class the PS2 as retro. Um, as far as, I mean, the, the, the PS2, there are, I don't know how many thousands of games. Um, it was kind of the Wii of its time. In other words, everybody made games for it. And there's a lot of absolute shit games for it. Seriously. It's a console. I mean, I've got it sitting there. It's, I've got a hard drive thing on it. It's a console that I don't play very often. Um, it's not that I don't have any love for it. It's, it is a great console. I, I don't see a, a massive difference between that and the Xbox 360. It has some cracking games. So I'm not really up to date with what are good games and bad games. The good the the one game that I would say if I had to pick one game to play in it, it would be Gradius Five. Um which is just an absolute phenomenal version of Gradius. It's beautiful. It looks like it's H D. It's a stunning, stunning game. Um and I was lucky enough to buy that um a couple of years ago. I got a hold of the game. It does go for a fair bit of money. Um it's such a great game. Is it Shadow of the Colossus? I think there are other games that were really, really hyped in it. There's one called Ico. Uh, I-C-O. Um, again, it's raved about. It's looked upon as a classic. You've obviously got all your, is it your Gran Turismos and that as well. But I'm trying to think. There's Ape Escape. There's some cracking games. Uh, I'm probably the wrong man to actually advise what good games. If you like Shoot 'em Ups, Kev... Especially Gradius, you 100% must get Gradius 5. It's an absolute stunning, stunning game. Uh, in fact, I'll stick a wee link up to the top corner to let you see it running. Um, it's just a, it's an amazing game. Um, and like I say, you've got uh, like Shadow of the Colossus. But best thing to do, Kev, go into Google, best games for PS2. There's thousands of them. And the great thing is you'll get them for not very much money. They'll say that I think they are gradually starting to get more expensive because people are now I mean the games that you can get cheap are PlayStation 3, PlayStation uh, Xbox 360 games so they are probably starting to get become more collectible and games that um, that you could have probably got for a few quid maybe five years ago are now starting to demand more money but Google it anyway Kev but the PS2 is a great console if you can get yourself one of the fat ones the original ones you can and then get yourself one of the uh, what do you call it, the network adapters. You can plug an IDE hard drive into the back of it. So I've got, I think it's an eighty gig hard disk in that thing. It's got about sixty games in it. Um, it's quite a bit of a faff to put them on, but there's some really good YouTube videos out there you can actually watch. So, secondly, I have read online a lot of Switch owners are running into trouble with storage now that a number of good games are available for it. How much room do you have left in yours and what backup solutions are you considering? Um, I've got how many games? I've got four. Splatoon 2, Mario Kart, The Legend of Zelda and we're shortly going to be getting Mario Odyssey. 
Um, I've not had any issues so far. I don't really buy um, online games as such, Kev. In fact, I use, I use, I I like to have the actual proper game itself. So I don't think the, I don't think the Switch is like the PS4 or uh, Xbox One, where it installs the game on the hard disk. I think it still runs it from the card. So I've not in, uh, encountered any issues so far. I have had the, the issue with the Xbox One, you know, and the same with the PlayStation 4. I mean, the PlayStation 4 came with a 500 gig hard disk. Considering some games, I mean, like Gears of War for the Xbox One, it's something like 70 gig. 70 gig. There's like, there's a tenth of your, uh, your hard disk space gone. Uh, sorry, one quarter of your hard disk space gone just with one game. Um, so I've upgraded or updated the not updated, I've put a bigger hard disk in my PS4. Um, but the Switch, I believe you can put a memory card inside it uh, to expand it. It's probably one of these special memory cards. It'll not be a it'll not be a standard micro USB, no danger. Um talking of which, um I heard that uh, the the PS Vita has now been there is a hack available for it. But you had to kind of run the hack every time you run uh, ran it. But I heard that there's now a permanent hack, so you can put custom firmware on it, and it will allow you to run emulators. Um, and it also apparently lets you use normal SD cards, micro SD cards. So I'm going to look at that because the the Sony memory cards were just stupidly expensive. I'm talking like seventy quid for something. So yeah, but back on track. Switch. I've not had any issues so far, Kev. I don't really download games per se, so it's not an issue I've had. Um, if I do run into space problems, then I'll probably have a look at doing the uh, the SD card thing. Thirdly, I went to Best Buy this week, which is a major home electronics company here in North America, and I was sad to see all video games relegated to a single 10-foot wall. <laughs> Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft were sharing the same shelf, leading me to think games are moving to an online-only realm very soon. Do you agree? Um, unfortunately, yes, Kev. Um, I think for the majority of people, that's not an issue because we've got we've all got super-fast broadband. Um, I don't think kids now are going to want to play the games they're playing now in 10 years' time. It's only old farts like yourself that want to be able to have the ability to play our games. I mean, there's this massive thing about the games that I've bought for the PlayStation 4 and downloaded. Once the servers eventually close down, I wouldn't be able to play these. I wouldn't have thought. So, it's a concern, um, but it's the way it's going, Kev. It's digital now. Look at music. How often do you go into a shop to buy a, a CD? You just go into iTunes or Apple, uh, not Apple Music, Amazon Music, whatever, Google Music, and you download it. So, it's sad, Kev, but I think things change, things move on. And I've just got to get on with it, I suppose. Number four, Inflected Flinch and a few others have been reviewing and enjoying Sonic Mania. But as I'm not a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, I will not be purchasing that game. How about you? Um, I did actually, did I not let you? I mentioned it in a, a waffle. Um, I bought, um, in fact, you know what? That's I've just That just contradicts what I'm saying. That, I got that for the Switch, and it's download only. Uh, although I think they might be bringing a memory card with it. Um, I was playing it, I was watching a mate playing it at the computer club, and I'm not a Sonic the Hedgehog fan, but you know what? It just looks absolute, it looks glorious. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I thought, I've got to have that. It looks like an old game. If you can imagine the game coming out 30 years ago, for the first time, but on enhanced hardware, that's what it looks like. It's got more colours, it's got more depth when it comes to scrolling and that kind of stuff. It just looks amazing. Really nice game. So I bought it, it was only 16 quid. Um, I've not played it much, I've got to say, but it's glorious. Um, I'm not a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, but I'm enjoying it, Kev, so you can take from that what you will, mate. And finally, do you remember the old Advanced War games? There's a new title coming out for PS4 called Tiny Metal, which seems to be the spiritual successor to Advance Wars. Check it out. You know what? I, <laughs> when I was copying and pasting that into this, I almost fell off my chair. Um, because 
was it two days ago? I've no idea why Advanced Wars got into my head. I hadn't read your question. I don't know when you actually uh, sent it. I did not read your that question, but something got into my head and I thought, I want to play Advanced Wars. And I actually was asking a few mates who were right into it, what is the best one to play? So I've actually started playing it just in the last three, four days. Um, I'm probably going, I've been told the, is it Advanced Wars, oh, I can't remember what, Dual Strike, I think it is. That was one for the, the DS. Apparently, it's got some game breakers, whatever that is. Um, listening to people, it seems that the very first one that came out in the Game Boy Advance is the one to play. So that's the one I've actually started playing. I was playing it last night, so that's quite spooky. Um, yeah, Tiny Metal, never heard of it. Sounds like a, a kid's uh, heavy metal band. Tiny Metal! Um, so yeah, I'm going to check that out. But anyway, thanks for your, your questions, Kev. Next up, Ian Hunter. I've recently picked up a Hyperkin Retron 5, and after struggling with Xbox One and PlayStation 4 games, I walked myself back to the 8-bit and 16-bit era, only to realise that I am shite at retro games. <laughs> I would love to hear any comments or opinions you have of the retro and, and emulation in general, Alan. Um, you know what, Ian? I was I was tempted with the retro 5. I believe it is emulating. Um, I'm not. I can't comment on what the emulation is like. I know a few mates. I think my mate Chris. Chris Ashanked, he did buy a Retro on 5, I don't know if he still got it, and he loved it. I mean, it's 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 one of these things, if it's emulation, then why not get yourself a Raspberry Pi and put ret what is it? Retro Pi on? Um, you know, there's emulators out there for complete free. This is the problem, you know, if it's emulating, then it's not the real hardware. Um, but for somebody who wants to be able to you know, wants to be able to play NES games, SNES games, original cartridges, doesn't have the room, the money, the inclination to get the original hardware, then Retron 5s are fantastic. You know, it's one size fits all. I think they, I don't know how many games it plays, different systems, maybe five or six. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, they've got their place. I'm not, it doesn't interest me because more than, to me, it's just an emulation station and I've got I've got a million of these. Um, and I said, I've never actually tried them. I believe it's... I think it's the emulation's not too bad. Um, but, you know, it's like anything. If you're a purist, you may say, oh, it plays too quick. Or, I mean, I, I read about all these systems having HD, they, you know, they plug in HDMI, the upscale. But I don't want my SNES... Zelda to upscale. I want to play it the way it should be played. Um, but again, it's it fits a purpose. It's great for what it does. Um, I've never, I've never really done any more than just look at it. I, I certainly wouldn't. I think even if somebody offered me one for twenty quid, I wouldn't take it. You know, I don't know. I might take it and stick it in the loft, and then when eventually all my systems break, um, they're capacitors blow up whatever it is that old hardware does then I could dig out the loft but uh, it's not something I've really looked at getting Ian but I know a few people that have them and they seem to think they're really good so so I hope you enjoy it Ian but yeah I'm, I'm shite at old games as well um, <laughs> it's an age thing mate next up is Panther UK if money was limitless which system would you go for 100% completion of original tapes discs cartridges as opposed to SD cards and why? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, you know, I could say, oh, I love the all the Vectrex games. You know, if it's, oh, I don't know, right, well, let's not think about it as far as so I can play them. Let's think about it just to have a complete set. I'm just looking around. Um... I don't know, I think, I mean, the SNES is not one of my, I love it, it's a great system, but it's not, it's not my favourite console, but I think there's something really, really nice, um, 
about the SNES and Mega Drive, the boxes, they they had their own distinctive look. I mean, the SNES, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to go for the SNES, actually. There was something really distinctive about the cardboard boxes, yeah, they weren't made to last. Um, you know, it takes me back. I've got some fond memories of going to video game shops and standing looking at all the sort of the SNES games on the shelf and you know picking the box up um you know so there's i mean there's so many so i could i could pick one of any system but i'm going to go for the snes i think to have every single snes game in the original box with instructions uh, it would be really nice the mega drive would be a close second i think there's just something ace about having the car you know the the games that had their own distinctive kind of art cover a uh, cover art and that kind of stuff so yeah i'm going to go for the snes one uh chris so thanks for the question mate um lurch treble six treble four <laughs> i'm guessing somebody had the uh, lurch six 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 four four three so you have to go for one up as someone who obviously appreciates the gaming packaging and box art what is your favorite packaging and art style and what is your opinion on modern packaging art well, these questions seem to be just linking in really, really nicely. I'm just talking about the, the cover art for the Mega Drive. Um, the fun, you know what, this sounds daft. I'm going to contradict myself. I'm not generally one who thing these game art. I'm not bored about having game boxed games. If I can get a, a game, a cartridge for a fiver or a box cartridge for 20 quid, I'll always go for the £5 one. Maybe that's my Scottishness, but it doesn't bother me, um, cover art. Um favorite packaging and art style again i think it's it's a it's a bit of a no-brainer i mean some of the the japanese uh, artwork and boxes and games particularly stuff like the, the snes the, the, the dream dreamcast sega saturn it just looked amazing you know the equivalent game in the uk would have some really really shitty um cgi thing whereas the japanese box art was always almost looking kind of hand drawn really really pretty so i think probably for game art alone i think i'd probably go for the saturn the sega sega dreamcast something like that i think this is artwork is always really nice as far as mo uh, modern packaging goes i mean i've let you see you've seen inside a switch box in the switch box you get the plastic casing and that's it that is it i'm not even bothered like you see it you get nothing and it's not even just a switch any modern game now you don't get an instruction manual now i know it's to do with saving the environment and all that kind of stuff but it really feels like you're getting none for your well you're getting a game for your money you know what i mean but you're not getting any anything to really hold to look at um, and it kind of goes back to what we we're talking about earlier on about the digital downloads. Everything is moving to digital on demand. So they're trying to do away with as much packaging as possible. So when you buy a game now, you get your standard, <coughs> excuse me, your standard DVD box. You get the cover and that is it. You get the disc. You don't get any manual, which I think is sad because a big, big part of the uh the purely getting a new game was reading and instructions and that kind of stuff looking at the manual looking at the controls and you know it would, you'd get really excited um to, to kind of play the game so yeah i think uh the sort of the the tangible games now they're they're getting less and less uh, because it's all download now you know so unfortunately so anyway listen thanks for your question mate um second last one Craig, Craig Wilson, with the recent success of Sonic Mania, what game from the 16-bit era would you like to be remade for modern consoles PC? Um, now, I have kind of touched on this before. What game would I see, would I like to... I was going to say Mario Kart. We've got Mario Kart. We don't need another Mario Kart. Um, I, would, I would say Mario Kart, but it, it has been made for modern consoles. Um, poor blame Um, I'm trying to think what 16 bit game would I like to see getting remade? 
you know what I would like I would like to see a new pilot wings I mean I'm talking the one where you parachute you're flying planes I would love a brand new version of pilot wings I'd love to see pilot wings on the switch um, I've not heard of any talk of it coming out um, I mean it came out on the what did it come out on it came out in the 3DS is that the last time it came out in the N64 I think or was it the GameCube? Was it N64? And then it came out on the uh, 3DS, which is really good. But I'd love to see a modern remake of Pilot Wings on a on the Switch. Yeah, that that would be quite nice as long as it's stuck. It didn't overly complicate things too much. It's stuck to what we had before, but uh, just obviously improved the graphics. So yep, yeah, go for that one, Craig. And finally, Bop MC top soundtracks for C64 games. I love Armalite and Delta particularly. What are your all-time favourites? Oh, again, I've mentioned this a, a few times. Um, my favourite track of all, all time because it's just, it's an epic. It's up there, it's like, it's the Bohemian Rhapsody of computer chip music and it's Monty on the Run. Monty on the Run is just, it's an astonishing piece of music. It really is. It's incredible. If you listen to it, from start to finish it just it goes on and it's got these different it speeds up it slows down it's got violence it's got everything as a standalone piece of music it is incredible um other favorites of mine's Wizball, the title screen to Wizball. um that's martin Galway at his very very best incredible even like the the ocean loading screen i love that some other music that i really like it's not so kind of well known um, <clears throat> is it Master of Magic that was Rob Hubbard I love that Confusion which was a puzzle game again that was Rob Hubbard there's one little bit of music which I've uh, I did feature in a video a long long time ago it was I couldn't even tell you who wrote it it was for a game by Analog Software it was called Flight Path 737 um, I'll see if I can put a link to it and I'll, I'll let you hear it um, but it's it's just it's, it only lasts maybe 10-20 seconds I don't know what it is about it it's just it takes me back to a happy time but I just think it's a beautiful piece of music there's a lot of other music um, that wasn't for games as such that I always liked um, there was a guy called the Mighty Bog who used to do a lot of demos and that kind of stuff he wrote some incredible stuff but what other C64 tracks this is I love I mean Martin Galway was an absolute genius some of the stuff that he managed to get out of it was just incredible um, Sanction is another favourite of mine's um, Delta I was never too keen on I don't know why um, what was the other game you said that was a game Armalite I'm not too Armalite's not a game I've really played much Commando is another awesome 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 track that whatever it is he uses the instruments that, that uh, Rob managed to use for it it's a real heavy kind of gritty sounding track it's brilliant for the game itself um, and then you've got the title title screen music to Commando and I think it was very similar to Monty on the Run title music screen uh, not title music screen sorry um, high score uh, track I should say another amazing piece of uh, music but there's so many there really really is um, it's a, a wonderful thing so so anyway guys listen that's uh, that's me done all my talking for this week I want to go and uh, Go and get ready. Um, I've got my my rock thing to ah hell spells. Um, I've got my my rock show tonight, which I want to uh, go and get ready for. I've got a train to catch very very soon. So uh, yeah, listen. Thanks again to everybody that supports the channel, to all my new subscribers, to all my long standing subscribers, to all the guys that keeps giving me questions, that supports the channel, that comments, that watches videos, that likes my videos. You know what I'm talking about. It's all awesome. Um, subscriber numbers is going up, which is uh, wonderful. So thanks for that. And it just remains for me to say, guys, thank you very much for watching.